Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another Premier Division review show with JP uh, with us today. We've got Keno back as well. What's the story, lads? Are you well? Yeah, all oh, good. Good stuff, good stuff. I tell you what, we'll get the bragging from JP out of the way first. So we'll start with Bohemians and Derry City at Taylor Park, where it's Bohemians won, Derry City two. Uh, Liam Burke was back and uh, scored for balls, gave him the lead. Uh, Ronan Boyce uh, equalised in 59. And I can Tunde, another late, late show for JP. Go on, tell us about it. Uh, well, what can I say? Like, it's three ones in the first day, uh, seven games, and the 90th, 90th minute. Um, just, it's unbelievable. Um, just the way the team, they just keep going right to the very end. And you can see maybe our teams are settling for the point and Derry are just like, well, we're not settling for a point. If you just want the point, then we're going to go and try and win the game. And um, first half was sort of an up and tuck. Bows started brightly. Derry came on there. Bows took charge again. Derry dominated the last 10 minutes. Both a brilliant team goal to take the lead. Um, lovely play front to back. Great, great play from Burt once again into the box. They, they finish it off and they were sort of a wee bit ropey and for maybe five or ten minutes, but then they settled down. They started to command it. Talbot made a couple of saves. They keep a score one 0 and Derry made a sub at half time. Brought Patrick Magalani on. Changed the whole game. He just dictated play. Just someday they get on the ball, take a sting out of the game at times, pick passes, and that's exactly what he did. And he was instrumental in the, the first goal because it was his pass forward initially that let, got Derry on the attack and the ball in the box. Great ball by McJanet. Um, Ronan Boyce getting in at the back post, thumping the header past the goalkeeper um, to get his first goal of the season. Um, he scored seven last year. Um, so he'll be looking they, they, they add a few more this year as well from then yeah. on just seemed to be one winner Re they really did when Derry made substitutions they were sort of changing not just the personnel they were changing the way they were playing as well and Keith Long made a couple of substitutions too near the end of the game but it was like for like they were, he brought on Junior and I can't remember the other sub that he brought on but he still played the same way. He was it was more like he was just trying to get fresh legs rather than trying to, to change it up. And Derry went, Derry just went for it. It was a stupid free kick deep on the stop his time for Bose to give away. McGonagall's going absolutely nowhere in the corner. Defender fouls him. But one thing that I can't get is a free kick out the on the, the wing. And no, they didn't stick a man, at least one man ten yards away. Because then Patrick McGlunny has can pick whatever height he wants in that ball. And he kind of floats it, sort of maybe... It's not a great height on the ball. Maybe if there's a man there, he maybe has to put it a bit higher and Bowes deal with it better. But fair play to Akintundi. The ball was flicked on and he, he had a... It was an instinctive header. He got something on it. And for the second game in a row, Derry, and the third game of the season, Derry won 2 one against the Dublin team with the last kick of the game. <laughs> Keen, uh, from a Bowles point of view, they'll be very disappointed to lose the way they lost at the end. And as uh, JP says as well, to give away that free kick in the position, like it's always those free kicks that end up, uh, you know, like in the back of the net type thing. But uh, it was an improved performance overall from Bowles, but it has been a very, very difficult start for them, hasn't it? Yeah, it's twice. been a tough start, a uh, very tough start, in fairness. And it's, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to get any easier either for them. So, uh, Look, they'd be disappointed. Uh, the performances, you know, the, the performances haven't been bad, you know, and that's me being honest with you. I, I, I don't think, like I thought, you know, I think definitely a draw was a fair reflection on that game and a couple of games this year by Bowles as well. I think, you know, they've been they've been doing really well. I think the performances and parts have been really good. Like, this was probably up there with one of the better performances mm. of the season, you know, and I've looked, They'd be disappointed with the way they conceded the last goal. Look, nobody needs me to tell them that. But, you know, in terms of how they're playing and all, I don't think they're actually playing as bad as people are making out to be. Uh, they're obviously just not getting the results to match it. Uh, you know, they, they've gone from a stage where every point they get, you know, is a positive point to now, like, they're nearly expecting to win every game, you know, and 
it's 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 not going to be the case, and that's that's for a number of teams in the in the country. But you know, it's 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 disappointing when you lose a goal like that. I know frustrations are high, and you know uh, everyone's everyone's fuming with the last minute goal, and look like you would be, but. You know, I, I, I still, I'll be honest, look, it's, people will probably look at me and say it's easy for you to say because it's not <laughs> Pat's. But, like, in saying that, it, the performances, and, you know, they obviously haven't, the results, it's a results business and not a performances business. Mm. But, mm. You know, I, I, I genuinely don't think it's as bad as people are making out to be. Uh, they're, la- they're lacking a bit of, um, I don't know, a gold chest at the moment, Keno. They yeah, just look, seem to lack something there, don't they? I said it from the start. I don't think Promise is better as a nine. I think you need to have a proper number nine. Mm. And you have but is he, the, is he the best nine they have at the club, Keane? Is that the issue? You know what I mean? I think he is. But, you know, mm. and you have to give a run as well. You know, you have to give these people a run. And you have to give them a Junior chance. Junior there as well. Yeah, you have Junior. But, you know, Junior is not really a number nine no. either. No. And, you know, it's... I don't, to be honest with you, we haven't a clue. Uh like I, I don't know. Like we need to give it time because look, it's a new team again. They're starting from scratch every season. We say the same thing, but you know, uh, similar similar start to the season than last year. Probably last mm-hmm. year was just a little bit better. But I know in the early days, Pat mm-hmm. beat them and all, and you know they were they were struggling a little bit in the early part of the season. And you know, in and around Europe, they started to just before Europe, they started to peak. And you know, I, I think they'll. They'll need to peak fairly soon. Uh, they'll need to get more points on the board because teams are running away with it. I think a lot of teams are beating everyone. You know what I mean? Everyone's beating everybody. Like we've seen Shells beating Sligo and stuff like that coming into it. So, you know, teams are getting points and picking up points and teams are losing points every week. And the teams that you're not, that you're not expecting to drop points are dropping points. So, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot to play for. It's still majorly early days, but I I, yeah. I just think there's a little bit of discontent with Bowles at the minute. And look, I think in around the fan base as well, mm. in terms of like there's a big like blow in supporters and this and that. But mm. you know, when the club was in the gutter a few years ago, they mm. were they were bringing anyone in off the street to get in and support them. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, I, there's a bit, there's a lot of stuff there that. I, I, I'd be uncomfortable with as well to be honest yeah, with you yeah. I, I just think look that's and I, I don't understand all this thing where they're like yeah it's all right they look after the community and they do the recycling and they you know they're trying to be everyone's friends and all that but you know that that's separate to the football and that's not like like whether the Bows have six green bins in their back garden isn't going to make them win or lose it's all about what happens on the pitch but I, I don't think all that matters but it's all of a sudden when they're winning, that doesn't matter. But when they're losing, all this comes into it. And look, it's not, you know what I mean? I, I don't think, I, I don't think this has got to do with the team. And I, I just, I think people are kind of frustrated at the club a little bit more so than the, than the team. And it's obviously reflecting I think, on that. I tell you what, I think there's a lot of frustration, wrongly, or rightly or wrongly, as I said, uh, for Keith Long. I've noticed there's a bit of discontent there. Have you noticed that? Yeah, and look, it's you know, it's it's obviously frustrating for them. You know, they they got to a cup final and they've they're, they've actually got used to being in Europe. You know, mm. in, in like mm. the last two years, you know, so the expectation has gone for like it has gone really majorly high, mm. and people are looking at Bowles, like I says, to try and close the gap and try and be in the round on on par with Pats. And, you know, can you give Dirty, can you give Rovers a good game on the day? And, you know, being there, being that packed with Pats and Slowy going on, I still think they are. Mm. I, don't think mm. I don't think they're out of that. They won't be. They'll, they'll mm. be there by the end of the season. They are missing a key Buckley. I've no doubt about that. They're missing that leadership. And they're missing a the Rob Cornwall at the back. I think that definitely, they're, they're two major, major key players. Like you see Tariq Wilson with the armband. It's, you know, that's, it's, mm. it's probably not like uh, if I'm being honest, I thought James Talbot would have got it. Uh, but look, I don't know what I don't know what situation is. I'm not mm. saying he shouldn't be captain or that, like mm. but you go from Keith Buckley to Tyreek Wilson. Do you know what I mean? As captain, look, that's that's not fairly new player as well, type thing. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, minor, yeah. they're minor issues, like, yeah, you know, yeah. that's stuff that's not major, but I just think 
they need to just reset a little bit. Uh, try and pick up a couple of points now. There's a lot of games coming up. Yeah, they can pick up that first year of points. Just stay in the round, third, fourth, fifth. You know, and if you can stay in that little bracket of Pat Sligo Dundalk, you know, I think you'll be okay. And, you know, they will hit top form. They have some really good players. I've no doubt about it. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what Bowles fans think in the comments there as well. JP, go on quickly. I just think the fans just need to stick with the players and the manager because, as we know, winning can be a habit, but so can not winning. And if the fans are behind you when you're not winning, it, it's a it's a real boost. If you're if you're not winning and they're getting on your back, it makes it even more difficult. And they just need to stick with them, grind out a few maybe one nil ones, dirty dirty ones, just just to get that confidence going. And then, and no doubt that Bowes End will start to push themselves up a table and be challenging for a top four or five. Absolutely. We'll move on to Dundalk and they had a good 2-0 win over UCD at Oriel Park. Uh, Kelly after 60 minutes, Hooban after 47. Hooban seems to be at the centre of nearly everything in this game. Uh, lovely cross to Benson, I think, that hit the bar. Uh, lovely play with Kelly, actually, with the first goal as well and uh, brilliantly taking second goal after I think the carry was actually the guy who crossed it into the box. Uh, it looked a comfortable enough one, JP, uh, judging what I've seen, to be honest with you. They could have yeah. had, I think they hit the bar twice, actually, in the game altogether and uh, yeah, look comfortable for them. Uh, much needed after that uh, defeat and draw there where they really didn't perform well at all. I they they needed they needed a, a result here in this game, especially after coming off an international break. They say they went down the international break, losing the draw there where they 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 didn't play well, they they didn't push it down for, for an equalizer. Um so this is exactly what Stephen O'Donnell would have been looking for, I think. First and foremost, they'd have wanted the result more over the, the performance just because mm. they'd only won one game this season. And that was against Van Harps. Their second one now has come against GCD. So um from what I saw the highlights, you from what I saw the highlights, um this was a a good performance, a good one. Could have been more. Um UCD probably by the looks of it only had one real chance and it was a, a long ball forward and Colin Whelan put it straight in the goalkeeper's hands. Um, the first goal I really did enjoy watching that first goal the, the yeah. three ball and the dummy from Kelly they, they make a keeper go down and he, he just tapped it in and the second goal was absolutely brilliant um, great ball in by the right back great finish side a side footed folly as well by by Hoban and um, it, it's what we've come to know with him is just getting in on the end of crosses we know in the past it was maybe Michael Duffy Daryl Horgan and stuff like that. So he's he's getting used to the new players that have come in. They they provide him the service, and they're getting used to the run, the type of runs that, that he likes to make. And um, Dundalk will be looking to kick on now. Um, they they won against Van Herpes and he went on a string of four or five draws and a mm. defeat. And um, they'll be looking now to their next game and next week they they really get three points on the board and start to make a, a claim that that they're. In, they're going to be one of the teams pushing for Europe this year. Like the, there's no, I don't see no reason why they, why they can't if they can mm-hmm. stick a few ones together. Because as we've seen over the early, early part of the season, that every team in this league can beat everybody. And if the teams around you drop points, and you pick up points. All of a sudden, you could find yourself in seventh place, and all of a sudden, within a couple of weeks, you could find yourself in the top three. Um, mm-hmm. so, so Dundalk will be looking to, to use this now as a, a springboard for their season. 100%. Our thoughts from UCD's point of view, Keen, it's starting to get a little worrying. Seven games, uh, no wins, three draws. And it just <coughs> seemed like Dundalk were very comfortable in this match, didn't it? Yeah, they were comfortable. But, you know, you you, you kind of expect it, you know, in the mm. way. Like, see, they aren't going to be looking to... Look, they're going to go out and try and get something, but they're not, they're not, they're not relying on getting points away from home against, mm. you know, the top five teams. You know what I mean? They'd be trying to get their points in around the rest, and especially at home. So, mm. you know, it's it's tough for them. Uh, I actually thought Paul, uh, thought Doyle in the middle for them was brilliant. Uh, mm. Dundalk, I thought he was excellent mm. on the ball. And he, he really got them ticking. And he's, he's, he reminds me of Robbie Benson a little bit in terms of the way he can get forward and he can move and he can play. So he, I think he's a really good sign. And one that kind of went under the radar a little bit. But I really like him. Uh, you see, they'd be worried a little bit because, look, now... I can't trust them highlights. I'm sure they probably had another shot or two. 
you can't trust the highlights because they seem to be mi- like every time we go to a match Damn. and then I go back and watch the highlights. That, you're missing. You're saying to yourself, "Jeez, I can't wait to see that when I go back." And you go back and there's not even on it. You know what yeah. I mean? So I don't understand it. Uh, I they, think sometimes it depends, Keen, which team is showing the highlights. If you get me, if it's the home team, generally they kind of leave out bits from the away team. There's a little of that going on. I know. But anyway. Yeah, look, you know, I do. I think, uh, I think the dog will be delighted with that. Just another three points, just to stay in the round. Yeah. You know, Pat Sluigo, Pat Sluigo, the dog bowls, you know, that's kind of the little pill that I'm looking at there. Yeah. And I think it's anyone's game, to be honest with you. Anyone can get that. The dog have a small squad, though. Uh, I mm-hmm. think, you know, bowls have a small squad, as you can see. Sluigo have mm-hmm. a small squad, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, Pat's probably have to. Biggest of the rest uh, mm. in terms of squad size. Uh, so, you know, I think that might come into factor coming in now, to, especially another little busy period coming up with a lot of games. So, you know, we I think we, we'll see the league settling down a little bit over the next seven, eight games, I'd say. But, you know, Dundalk can be happy. You know, two wins against probably everybody's bottom two, if you were to call it, you know, and, you know, they, they, they're not losing games, which is important. I know they lost a draw at it and stuff like that, but they're not. Yeah. You know, they're not, they drew it dirty. You know, they're not losing. They're not losing an awful lot of games, and they're not. They're not losing any ground really. So, you know, it's been a solid start. I think, to be honest with you, I, I, it's kind of the start you'd expect them to to have. Mm. You know, I would say they've been great, but in parts they've been really good. She McCarty was excellent in the game. Mm. I thought. Uh, I actually seen this full game. Uh, he was really good. I, I was very impressed with him up and down, and he done he done a lot of he done a lot of running off the ball as well. But like I said, I'm, I'm impressed with I'm impressed with Doyle in the middle for them. I think he's I th- I, th- I think he's a player, and you now he was one that was linked with Pats before mm. uh, with Stevie. So it's no wonder to see Stevie there now with him. But he's a player that has gone under the radar. But I think we will know a lot more about him this season. Good stuff, good stuff. We'll get on to Sligo, the show counts. It's Sligo, Neil, Shelburne, one. And just kind of smile there, JP, because we were saying in the preview show, it'll be interesting to see when Sligo go down, or goal, goal, get down, because they haven't gone a goal down this season. And uh, yeah. obviously Dan Carr gave Shelburne the lead and all three points in the end. And uh, I don't think, um, judging by Sligo fans and for what I've seen as well, they didn't exactly respond very well to going behind in the game. They seemed to struggle to break a dog at Shelburne down in this match. And uh, one thing I will say which for Shelburne as well, uh, Clark was back in goal. And I just feel that maybe he might have steadied the ship in terms of defensively, in terms of organisation, mainly. He didn't have an awful, an awful lot to do in terms of saves. But simple things like having been a leader and organising the defence can be huge as well. And I think that was a big difference. Obviously, they defended very poorly against Harps the week before. But... Um, a blow for Sligo, a uh, big win for Shelburne, though. Absolutely. As we, as you touched on there in the previous show, we were we were actually talking about how it'd be good to see, not good to see Sligo go behind, but it'd be interesting to see how they would respond. And from and again, as I know Cian said earlier, you can't really trust the highlights shows, but from what yeah. from what we had seen, Shelburne were pretty comfortable. Before yeah. they scored, they could have had a one or two. They had a couple of chances, um, which they, they didn't take. And um, Brendan Clark being in goal, he's been around the league for years, um, around a few different clubs. His experience is invaluable, especially they maybe a brand new backline. Yeah. Um, I know, is it Webb you call the hour keeper? Um, yeah. They brought in Swansea. Look, and I, I understand that Swansea sent them over. They, they didn't come to sit in the bench but at the same time as a manager you have to think about the, the club and maybe the Damien Duff put Brendan Clark in um, mm. just they just they steady the, the ship a wee bit and provide the I leadership. do wonder I do wonder if Webb was needed if I'm honest with you but that's another question for another day <laughs> Um, and look I I don't see any doubt in the awarding of a penalty I think it was I think it was mm-hmm. a penalty that the Shelburne player nips the ball in front of him and I think he's, he uses a, his body to make sure that the Sligo player collides with him, but I, I don't think he can argue with the... It's clever play from Conor Kane, the decision. isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. He, it's, it's clever play from him. Um, can't argue with the decision. And 
from the highlights reel, um, Sligo didn't really start pushing until the last ten minutes, and Shelburne, as we, as I had said all year, been saying all years, Damon Duff's trying to make them a hard team to break down. Now, the the Finn Harps game was probably an exception where they conceded three probably sloppy goals from their point of view, but it's exactly the kind of performance that um, Damien Duff would have been looking for off the back of that Finn Harps result. He's gone away yeah. to Sligo. We, we were unbeaten, hadn't, con- hadn't conceded the first goal in any game all year, and he's gone and won by a goal to nil. And again, I keep saying it about other teams, but this will be Shelburne will be looking, they, they move, kick on from here. Thought Shea Farrell, was it you call him? Or Shane, Shane Farrell, yeah. He seemed to be instrumental in everything that Shelburne were doing, especially in the first half. And it's just things like just things like that. Taking the game, don't be settling for sitting in and mm. fighting teams on. Take teams on, see what see what rewards you can get. And they did that against Lago and, and they, they got their just desserts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Keen, it's a massive win for, for Shelburne. Obviously, it's like if there's no need to panic yet, to be fair, but it's just a case of uh, how they can respond because we often see with Sligo, they go on these great runs, don't they? And sometimes it just falls very flat. So it'll be just interesting to see in the next few weeks how they perform, but uh, a massive win for Shelburne after that bad defeat, let's be honest, home to Finharps. Yeah, look, it was great to see Clarkey back in goal, to be honest with you. Uh yeah. And I know I look, I look like, and I know he's playing by shells, but it's great to see him back in the, great mm-hmm. to see him, you know, in the league again and playing. Uh, he definitely pulled off a lot more saves than the highlight trail show because we're seeing the game. Uh, mm-hmm. he that bit of experience, that bit of know how, and you know, slowing the clock down and just, you know, he was brilliant at that. That's what Clarkey gives you as well as some really fantastic shot stopping and. Distribution, everything he ha- he has a lot now, and he's really improved over the years as he's got older. He's nearly you, you, you're a little bit surprised they did bring in Webb in the twelfth season, to be honest. Though. Yeah, look, it was a little bit. I don't know to be honest with you, why, but look, I think I don't think Clark he'd be going anywhere now. I think he'd be in the in the squad, and you know, I think he'd be playing because look, I, I still I still rate Clark he's very highly. I still think he's up there. Up there with the very best in the league, you know. I know he's getting on a little bit now, but you know, I still think I still have him up there above a couple of keepers in the league, you know. And he'd be up there for me now in terms of like if if you had to get a keeper tomorrow, he'd be definitely yeah. talk. He'd be talking mm. to you now. And I, I, I rate him a lot. So that bit of experience, that bit of know how was excellent. I think Luke Bourne at the back was really good as well. And you know, he's really coming into it now and he's really mm. He's a big leader for Shells mm. now, and you know what? I, I think that's why that's what got them over the line. Look, another look. They, I'm outside worrying thing, but they're still not scoring, you know. And they, mm. like that was a penalty, like, you know. But they're not, they're not scoring an awful lot of goals from open play, and anyway, and you know, it's that's probably a little bit of a worry. But look, that's for next week to worry about. They got the win in Sligo, and, and what what a win it was. And look, it's it's no. Nothing bad on Sligo. Look, these things happen. You get caught, you get caught cold a little bit, and you know there was kind of one of them games. But mm. look, they just want to bounce back now. And look, I says everyone's beating everyone. You know, shells won't like to think that Pat's balls done dark and that little pill. Shells won't want to think that Sligo and all them. They they don't want to think that they're behind them or they should. You know, they want to compete with them. So, you know, Shells is probably fighting a little few this year, I think. Uh, but I think they'll be mid-table come the end of the season. And I don't think mm. there'll be much more, to, more than that. But look, what a win. Uh, you won't complain beating Sligo on the showgrounds. But look, I think uh, great travelling support as well. Uh, mm. from, from, the, from the photos you see, you know, you look on, back on sports. Well, I always look back after every match yeah. on sports. But <laughs> <laughs> look through every game in the league and all. But, uh, you know, I was looking back into some really good support, some good crowd. And, you know, Sligo had a big big home support as well. So that's going to be massive. But, look, really, some really good performances, I have to say. And, look, fair play to Shells. They'll, you know, they'd be disappointed over the last couple of weeks, especially with the Harps result and, you know, things like that. But, you know, Damien Duff is clever. You know, I think putting Clarkey back in, it's not... 
it's not to steady the ship a little bit. It's to hold on to his own job. Hey, Shelburne, I know, I know we've been we've been harsh on them in the show in terms of like lack of creativity, but I think it's, I don't think seen, it's harsh. I think it's what it's a fact, really. To be honest, what we've from seen, what we've so. seen they, from what we've seen, they seem to create a lot more in this game than mm. they have they've done in, in previous games. So I think, as Kian said, they're still not scoring goals from open mm. play, but. The fact that they have now started, they produce chances in open play, can only mm. serve, can only serve for the better going forward, and and they'll they'll look to take that and take that in the next game especially. Yeah, so face St. Patrick's Athletic one, uh, Toronto United one at Richmond Park. Dale Rooney with the open goal in eighteen minutes. Star Burns in seventy eight. And one thing I noticed, JP, in a lot of the games, and I know it might seem obvious, but. In a lot of these games, the first goal really has proven to be crucial. I mean, trying to get the first goal in this game, the game probably changes. Like, Dale Rooney took it well. He was alive. Um, Pat didn't defend it well at all, let's be honest. Uh, but that gave Trotter the opportunity to sit in for most of the game after that, uh, in which they did very well. They limited Pats to a couple of half chances, really. And you felt they were kind of comfortable defensively for a lot of the game. They had a chance where Evan Weir could have put them actually two up as well, but an Ang closed it down well. It wasn't what you call an easy one of one now because that an angle, but at the same time, uh, Pat's obviously equalised through Burns, as I said, who I thought was lively all night. I think the best of the Pat's attackers, to be honest, and really wanted to do something, if you like, in the game, had the hunger and desire, and uh, I suppose ability, if you like, to do so. But um, ultimately, dropped it, you know, a couple of weeks ago, JP looked like a team they're going to see a lot of goals. It definitely improved the aspect in the last two weeks. I might be a little bit disappointed not have maybe seen the game out here at Richmond Park. Oh, yeah, definitely, especially after taking the lead. Like I did say that the preview showed that this would probably be a game of cat and mouse because there's a lot of a lot of personnel um in the playing staff and coaching staff on both sides that knew one another and, and stuff like that. And it looked like that that's what how it, how it turned out. Um the the first goal was an uh, absolute calamity from Pat's point of view, but fair play to the Dale Rooney, did you say? Um yeah, was alive yeah. in the box and, and stuck the chance away. And they they will be disappointed that that chance at the start of the second half they didn't take. But really you have to give credit to the goalkeeper. He was out quick and closed it down and um credit to Pats. They they could have given up. They didn't. They kept going. And before they did, I think before Dara Burns actually scored, he had a, a chance where the ball down the box and he headed it and I actually thought that that was a goal that's yeah, how close it was yeah, yeah. It was a, sorry um, I actually thought that that was a goal because I, I thought it nestled in until I seen him holding his head his hands in his head but again Drogheda will be probably disappointed with the goal that they conceded didn't stop the cross and then they've conceded at the near post but again as I said it looked like gave him a cat and mouse um, and I, I predict that that's that's the way it would have would have been anyway. Um, Drogheda would be disappointed that they didn't see the game out, but on the other side of it, they'll be, dis- they, they'll be happy that they've come away from two games against, one against Dundalk at home and one against them Pats away. Mm. If you'd said them, we'll give you, you'll, you'll get four points out of them six, they would have snapped your hand off. And again, they, they sh- they've they showed up the defence because as you did say, they look like the team that were going to concede a lot of goals as well as could score goals. Um, mm-hmm. but they, they have tightened up. Um, and they'll be looking. I just keep saying it like they they they're another team that'll be looking to kick on. Like they've got Finn Harps now on Tuesday night, and they'll see that as now as a chance. They like they've gained a point on Finn Harps because Finn Harps lost to Shamrock Rovers, and they'll see two or sorry Monday night now as a chance they open up a four point gap or five point gap between themselves and Finn Harps. So, a lot of team are predicting that it's going to be between Drogheda and Van Harps and UCD to see who's going to who's going to avoid the, the bottom two. Um and um Drogheda will be definitely I think they're the team that's in the ascendancy at the minute going into that game. But fair play to them. They've gone the inch of core and they, they've come away with a point. As you say, disappointed not to see it out. But I think in hindsight they'll look back and see it as a point game. Uh Keen, from Pat's point of view, they mightn't see it as a point game. Um it- they seem to struggle to break down, draw it down. It's not quite clicking for Pats and attack, really, isn't it? Not even. No, look, it's, <laughs> it's, not been, it's not been an ideal start, you know, in terms of the home form, especially. They get, just from being there, you know, yeah. obviously they got an early goal 
uh, eight nine minutes or whatever it was, and you know they they yeah. scored. Uh, the tides kind of changes a little bit. It was mm. there was nothing between the two sides, you know, up until that. Then they score, and you know, then you're saying to yourself, then since when they scored, from my memory, Pats were a much better side. Mm. From when from when Drottler scored, we had a number of chances in the end of the first half. For the last half of the first half, we were excellent. We were peppering them with chances. Uh, we were attacking well. We were doing brilliantly. We weren't really conceding many chances down the other end at all. And it felt like we had to score before half time. If we scored mm-hmm. before half time, you know, we felt like we would have we would have won the game and probably fairly comfortably as well. Uh, then obviously half time comes and there's there's you thinking again, right? We score before sixty minutes, you know, we'll win it. So we, you know what I mean? And that's yeah, then it goes on. You score before <laughs> seven. <you know, laughs> Oh, it kind of felt like the goal wasn't going to come in a sense, though, didn't it? You know, to take off the play, caliber of player we were taking off, to bring on two young lads, just shows. I'm not going to say young lads, that's probably down them a little bit of injustice because, you know, in fairness, I think they've been brilliant for mm. the club. I thought Ben has been excellent last season, and, you know, Ben you know ben would see himself now as where he, he probably want to play a few more mm. minutes. So, you well, know. Team, you're, you're 1 0 down, and you've Ask two young fellas to come on and try and change the game, so it will take. Yeah, and in fairness, Tim has done that at Rotterdam, yeah. you know, and yeah, it, this this is what he does, and this is how yeah. he was so successful, in my opinion, because yeah. we we haven't come very well to players, you know. Tim mentioned it even in the thing. We have so many players and so many talented players coming through the system, our pads and coming yeah. through the ranks, and it's very exciting. And you know, we're but you know, it's great that we have a manager. In, mm. We had a manager in Stevie, and we have a manager now in Tim that are willing to give that a shot. You know, they're, they're still producing. And Adam Wadha, in particular, Adam Wadha mm. was unbelievable mm. in the game. He was exceptional. I don't, I don't think he put a pass wrong, you know. And I, I remember his first few minutes, I think, don't know who he came on against. It was a Sligo, maybe. Uh, mm. And a couple of passes went in his place. That's obviously mm. nerves, his first game, and stuff like that. But I just think Keane as well, it takes the pressure off Forrester a little bit because Forrester was getting on the ball a lot. But, you know what I mean, they needed someone else to try and do that as well. Like, you know what I mean? That can almost tire a player out. And it was almost expected, I'll give it to Chris and see if we can work something. So that took the pressure off Chris a little, I feel, as well. Yeah, definitely. And look, to be honest, I think once Pat's, once that change was made, Pat's really kicked on. Yeah. And then... It felt like it was only a matter of time before it went in. But it felt like if we went if we scored and went one now, we were gonna win it. And similar to the Sligo game, we scored late ish, you know, seventy odd minutes, mm. seventy seven, whatever it was. Uh if I'm thinking back, it was about seventy seven minutes yeah. or whatever. But, yeah. Nice well, finish from Dara and you know, brilliant. But then we were going again and we were attacking and it felt like the same thing against Sligo at home. When we drew with them, we felt like they were crumbling and they were crumbling. I'd say another five minutes in that game, we would have won it. And the same with Sligo, we probably could have even won it, even though we lost that one. Oh, look, I, I just think it's the frustrating part of it. The frustrating part is we kind of done it a bit late again. Yeah, we left it yeah. late. You know, yeah. when we scored very late on, you know, look, we're not, we're not picking up as many points as we'd like. Uh, the, obviously, the we had some nice good wins away to Harps and stuff like that. Look, the Derry game was pretty unlucky. They're last going time. to be inconsistent this season, aren't they, Keane? With the likes <laughs> of Sligo, Dundalk, the teams around them. But whoever gets in Europe are going to be inconsistent, aren't they? Let's be honest about it. Yeah, you, you just have to be the most consistent of the inconsistent. Of the inconsistent. You know, <laughs> and I, and I, no, I mean that, Luke. You know, you, you, kind of, you do. There's a good quote you know, for the show, anyway. You have to, Luke. consistent of the inconsistent. Of the inconsistent. It's true, you know, though. <laughs> if you can, you know, if you can just stay in around the teams around you and not just not lose to them, you know, like we've obviously we've 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 lost the slow ego, you know, we've lost the bowels, you know, we've lost the dirty, you know, that, that that's disappointing when you yeah. think of it. But you know, in fairness, the games against Drottle, no disrespect, they were excellent on the night and they were. You know, they, they got a point and that's what they were happy with and rightly so, but 
they're the games you have to be winning, you know. You have to be beating your drops. You have to be beating Finn Harps, your UCDs. If you want to be talked about and you want to be yeah. in that race, you know what I mean? So they're the ones you need to be winning. But, you know, it's just it's very frustrating. I think there was a lot of frustration around the place. But, look, <laughs> talk about inconsistency and everything, but the crowd is just unbelievable in Richmond these days. Like, you know, I have very rarely remember getting three and a half thousand that you know a Rovers game or a Bowls game and on like we're getting it for we're getting it for UCD we're getting it for Drottenay you know long may it continue now but the crowds have been amazing in Richmond especially but mm. you know I know from going there every week and you know you, you're going to the away games and you're looking at the crowds and you're saying Jesus this is brilliant you know there's a good atmosphere there's an extra you know how thousand people in nearly every ground at least you know and it, it really adds to it but you know, that I just think next week now will be a good advert to Pats and Dundalk game and you know there'll be a there'll be a good atmosphere in that. But you know, I just thought the lack of the lack of big the lack of a big game. You yeah, know, there was a lack of a standout game this week, you yeah. there, yeah, yeah. So I think that kind of played the media attention down there, but it didn't stop the crowds coming in. Um, you know what I, I do I, I generally <clears> think <throat> Pats will click uh it is only a matter of time. I do think he needs to tweak a few little things here yeah. and there. And, you know, maybe go with the trip. I think Bearman might need to come back into the side. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Anyway, mm. I just think that bit of know-how, that bit of experience, I think mm. that, can, that can get us through games. Even if you go with a tree and stick Bearman left of a tree, yeah. you know, remember two wing-backs. Yeah. I don't know, something can be done in anyway. But I, I'm not panicking. I, I still think... We're all right. I, I don't think, again, similar to Bowles, I don't think it's as bad as, you know, it could be. So, yeah. I've been used to being watching fairly poorish sides since 2015, 16. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I do. I think, you know, winning the cup last year and stuff has really put our, brought Pats up a little bit and brought the expectation up. And that's only natural. That's going to happen. And, you know what, we've. I'm, I'm not too worried, I'll be honest with you. I'm really not. I still think over the course of the season, look, no, don't get me wrong. Before I even say that, you have to be winning these games, and everyone knows that. Tim knows that, all the players yeah. know that. But over the course of the season, I think, you know, I think Pats might come out on top of that little pile. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. But look, they're firmly in that uh, race anyway, that's for sure. Uh, Bally Buffet, JP, finished in Harps, nil, Shamrock Rovers, three. We thought this would be tighter, didn't we? But uh, let's be honest, Finn Harps, it was a funny shot. They hit the post and it kind of came <laughs> out and hit Manus. It was very yeah, strange. Was lucky. Could have easily hit Manus and went in, but he kind of yeah. didn't know much about it. It just kind of yeah. went off. But um, after that, I think Shamrock Rovers are control of the game. I tell you what, Finn Harps be very disappointed with the first goal they gave away. Set piece, Finn Harps. Andy Lyons yeah. winning a header. You know, they'd be disappointed with that. Andy Lyons' second goal, though, however, different story, like absolutely brilliant yes, skill. He, yeah, he tucks inside there for, for a full back, finishes off brilliantly. And Burke with penalty after 87. I tell you, one thing I like about uh, Burke, he's not afraid to have a shot from this, from busy Graham Burke. Uh, if it opens yeah. up, he'll always have a shot. But uh, look, a good win for Shamrock Rovers on the road, a vital win for Shamrock Rovers. And uh, I do think they'll start to get to motor now, to be honest, JP. I I think so. Um, again, I actually doubted myself and went for a draw in this game. But I think, in all honesty, I probably did believe that Shamrock Rovers would have won this. But I don't think they would have won it 3 0. Um, I listened to they, they all have Argon afterwards. and. He said they didn't really, didn't really lay a glove on, um, mm-hmm. Shamrock Rovers. Um, they they didn't really didn't get near them. They had a couple of chances, and they he even touched on that one and hit the post. He says if that goes in, he says maybe is it a a, a, diff, a different night for us. And he was equally disappointed, and how they conceded, conceded the goal not just before half time but also from a corner. And for me, it was a corner that they they. At the near post, it then wasn't like it came on the back post, and Andy Lyons nips in at the near post and beats Mark Anthony McGinley. Um, but I suppose probably from then on, um, it was only probably only going to be one winner and a great piece of skill for a fullback from Andy Lyons. And 
gives a def- just sells a defender and goes all the way and sticks it past the goalkeeper. And when I heard about McGinley was sent off for giving away a penalty, um, where Gaffney trying to go around him, I thought maybe it might have been harsh on the you know the double jeopardy role. But whenever you watch it back, Gaffney's passed him the balls, passed him, and he just puts a hand out and takes him out. So I think Rob Harvey got that. But that's spot on. Um, and unfortunately for for Fun Herbs, they had to stick Bastion Heary in nets. Um, it's a, Graham Burke. I don't think whoever's in nets. I don't think was going to miss from twelve yards. But he had a couple of a pot shots from from distance. I think there was one in the first half where if McGinley the if McGinley spills it, there's a tap in for a Rover yeah. player, and um, keeper did well to hold it. And, but that that's what you need in these kind of games. Somebody who's not going to be afraid <clears throat> to have a shot from distance because you never know one might fly in. We saw it with Paul Patson a couple weeks ago against some Pats. I had to he get that in there. Back. <laughs> Sorry. He had a shot from <laughs> distance and it flew past the goalkeeper. And yeah. Sometimes that's what you need is a player just to get the ball 25, 30 yards from goal, have a shot. All right, if it goes over a bar, so be it. Nobody's going to complain. If it goes mm. on the net, happy days. But um, I think Rovers are starting to get into their stride now. I think from this, they, they'll, they, they'll keep Keep moving forward now. Um, I think it was a vital one for them, especially with how the result went in Daily Mount. Look, I know we're, we still haven't got a, a quarter. We're still, we aren't even through a quarter of the season yet. Um, so I think over the course of 36 matches, Shamrock Rovers probably will still come out on top, but it was vital because if they drop points against Van Harp, Derry got that vital one. Derry, I know, have a game in hand against UCD now tomorrow night. They, they move six points clear, which again, it's hard not to get carried away as a as Derry City fan, seeing yourself six points clear, but you have to have a wee bit of sense of reality as well and, and realise there's still three quarters of the season to go. Um, but but for Rovers, they'll want to use this now and really stamp their authority on, on this league, on this division. Keane, I just wonder if subconsciously even Finn Harps has their eye in that game on Monday against Trotter because, as you said, like it's the teams around you that are the important games really mm. and maybe they mightn't have thought subconsciously really that they could you know take on Rovers as much as uh, they could maybe drop them on they yeah definitely look it definitely comes into the minds but you know they go out there at home and they fancy their chances against anyone uh, it could have been a totally different game yeah uh, yeah but Rovers ended up winning comfortably uh, <coughs> I'm just, I don't, I don't know why Bastian Hurley of all of them was in goal, to be honest with you. <laughs> He's probably the smallest man they have. Uh, apart from Barry McNamee. Yeah, apart from Barry, but he plays on the wing now. But, mm. you know, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking, I'm wondering why him of all people was in nets. But look, I don't know. Uh, it, was, it was just, it was comfortable for always in the end, of course. And, you know, they went on to win it very well. And they're the games, yeah. again, that, that I'm talking about. They're the, the ones that Pats haven't picked up a point against Drott. Pats only picked up one point against Drott. They're the games you have to be winning. Yeah. Rob was went up there. No messing. Comes back 3-0. Comfortable. Uh, and, you know, that's that's good, I think, to see that. They'll obviously have a bit of confidence about themselves now. And like I said, there's a lot of games coming up now. Uh, those games come and take a fast again. You know, we're kind of the international break was a bit weird. Uh, having no games and all for the full summer, mm. I, didn't enjoy, I didn't enjoy it to be honest with you. I was watching, uh, I went to full division games and all, it just wasn't the same. Uh, but you know, I do, I think, I think it could be, it could be Rovers now challenging again. I think they probably shut a few people up because, uh, you know, people have been criticizing them and. You know, that, that was a massive... For me, the game-changer for always this year was the 2 against Sligo. Yeah, that's when we thought, you know what, they could have rolled over there the easy and they could have been in trouble then. They would have got ridiculed by everybody in the league because mm-hmm. you're up there to be sure at now and that's that's why they are. But I, I, do, I think they, I think they'll come back into it now. I, I don't think Derry will stay there. Uh, I think it'll be top, topsy-turvy for the whole season. I think they'll be full second, full second. And that's, uh, you know what, that's what we need. I think we need a good battle there. And, you know, if Pats can get a run together, if Sligo can get a run together, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, it's over the course of the season. Uh, I think a lot of people's money would be nearly on Sligo and Pats there. 
the try and close that gap just a little bit. And, you know, try and make it a little bit more competitive. And I think we will. I think clubs will. But as you can see, everyone's beating everybody, you know. And the games are so tight. The games are, the games just change so quickly with the goal. So I, I just, I'm happy to see a league like this. I'm happy to see Dirty Six clear. And, you know, I don't well, think it's three clear. Three clear at the moment. We better not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> exactly. Three, yeah. three and then the game in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah JP's yeah. just getting excited, you see. Um, no, but I said three with the game in hand. <laughs> I tell you what, we'll move on. We'll move on and give our quick predictions for the games on Monday. Now, these are the games in hand that are uh, coming to effect now. So UCD do play Derry on Monday. How are you say? Who's winning this? Are Derry winning this, JP, basically? Yeah. Three now. Score? Ooh, Kane. I'm going to go to this. Uh, I'm going to go and have a look at this, I think, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. It'll be a good game. This will be toy. Hmm. They're only after winning. They're winning a couple of games, so UCD won't make it easy for them. Uh, you know what? I think Daddy will win it in the end. But well, I think it'll be a, it'll be a one nil job, I think. It's hard to see them not win this, I have to say. But um, there's a little bit of pressure there on them as well because they have to beat UCD, if you get me. You know, people will be saying that. But I think Derry will win it as well. I think I suppose the massive game on Monday, really, in many ways, is Finn Harps and Drotter. Have you seen that, JP? Um, I think Drotter come on dead in the, the centre, say, because they, they've beaten Dundalk. They've got a point at inch of core against some Pats. Um. They've really tightened up in the, the last couple of mm. matches. Um, but it's the old adage, isn't it? They're going Andy Bally Buffet, um, which is a tough venue for they make it tough for for every team that goes there. Now I know they, they lost three 0 the other night and that was against Shamrock Rovers. Um and I think this game will be all about who gets the first goal, basically. Mm. Um if Van Harps can get the first goal in this game, I think they'll I think they'll go on to win it. Um, if Drahara take the lead I think Van Hurst may struggle to get back in there mm. um, I'm going to say I'm going to go for a draw in this one I think it'll be a draw <laughs> I knew that was being set up for a draw I actually think uh, I think Finn Harps is going to pinch this one Keen. Uh I think it's a most not lose and that's going to play mm. into a fight. You know, but I don't think both teams will want to lose the game. I think mm. if you're dropping both teams a point now, they might take it. Uh, mm. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to, because you are all being bored. I'll go for a, I'll go for a draw to the win. So one of, us, one of us has got to be right. I, mean, I, think they're, <laughs> I think they're in good form. And you know, I yeah. think they might, just, they might get somewhere there. Fair enough. Uh, JP, just on Tuesday, the last one, Sligo and uh, Bohemians. And obviously, Sligo losing at home the last time. This is going to be an interesting one for them, isn't it? Who's going to win this? I, I, um, they want a response, definitely, because they wouldn't have probably wouldn't gone, gone under the game against Shelburne. They probably wouldn't have expected they lose that game. Um, nobody, I don't think anybody would have expected them to lose them more so than themselves. Um, it's a big game. It's it's a chance now they, they show how they how they can react. They 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 losing um because they were unbeaten um before that Shelburne defeat. Um Bowes are probably flat as well because it, they were so close to getting a draw against Derry and, and lost and um I I just can't see anything other than a, a Sligo win in this game. I just think Sligo have have more of a momentum, even though they lost the Shelburne. Um they've been They've been playing well in games. They, as we touched on in the previous show, they they've been blowing teams away in the first half. And I just think if if Bose if they start the way they did against Derry, they have a chance of getting something out of this game. But if if they're if they're flat and they're slow, um, I think they I think Sligo I think Sligo won this. Um, I say two 0 I think Bose are going to nick a point here. I'm going to go one all game. It's great, isn't it, that these are all mixed up so you can go to them. I watched them at least. At least, uh, yeah. yeah. It feels, like, it feels like back in the COVID games again. Back in the COVID, the good old COVID days. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going to go slowly go to win it. And to be honest, I think Bowles have to get something over. Mm. 
Uh, I think it's right. massive for them. I think it's it's key that they get something out of this game, you know, and if they came back down the road with a point, brilliant for them because I think they need it. Mm. Uh, it could play out a draw, but, mm. you know, slowly on my just edge if I may. But look, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good game. It's on the yellow white TV. It's on the dodgy sticks. You know, everyone who have the watch. <laughs> Get your free dodgy sticks here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, brilliant stuff. We leave it there. Thanks for coming on. And, guys, thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Hit your bell notification button. And we leave it there. Cheers, lads. Brilliant.